Well, welcome to the Hyde Park Central School District Board of Ed meeting on June 27th, 2019. Uh, can I have a motion to enter into executive session to discuss confidential matters pertaining to confidential personnel matters? So, so moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. We're now in the exec session. So, welcome to the Hyde Park Central School District's Board of Ed meeting. Um, can we all please stand to uh, for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Wouldn't that be nice? Justice for all. Make sure this is off. Yep. Okay. okay, there is no um, agenda modifications. Can I have a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. Okay, upcoming events. First up, so what is the first event? Graduation, <laughs> tomorrow, <laughs> 6 o'clock. <laughs> Ready. Mm, 6 o'clock where? At FDR, on the turf. <laughs> Hopefully, not in the gym. Did you make it? Are you going to be there? I, I will be there. <laughs> if, if it's a surprise to anyone. <laughs> And then on the next board of ed meeting will be Tuesday, July 9th for the organizational meeting. Change yeah. time. Time starts at 6 p.m. Wait, do you see Oh my God. I thought you were doing pride with him. Oh, no. Okay, so pride. Is there any pride, Patrick? Um, not much, just because school's been over. But um, obviously graduation tomorrow, and then congratulations to the eighth graders who will be going to FDR next year. They had a nice moving up ceremony yesterday. Um, and then the fifth graders in the elementary schools who are going to, into sixth grade. So that's a fun uh, occasion for them. And that's pretty much it. Okay. Um, I also went to a couple graduations. I went to Ralph R. Smith's and got a history lesson on who Ralph R. Smith was, mm -hmm. and their very first board president. So I found that very informative. And I also went to Haviland's moving up for one of them. So very encouraging. Tomorrow we do again. Mm -hmm. Any other? No. Well, I went to Bottle Avenue as well in uh, the middle school. but. Uh, <coughs> I almost spring for air conditioning for that Haviland Auditorium. By by noon, it was really hot in there. You know, temporary ones. You know, just roll in and just like. But other than that, it was great. It was a great uh, moving up thing. Yeah, I, I made it to the Netherwood, and they involved the um, kindergarten children for the first time and tried something new. They got those noodles that you use in a pool and the kindergarten children stood in two rows so the fifth graders actually came through the tunnel <laughs> so it was visually uh, pleasing and they tied it into um, the fact that their fifth grade students are part of the um, induction for um, they, they work with the kindergartners the first few weeks of school to show them the ropes like kindergarten buddies um, the other thing that was interesting and I didn't know what was going on but um, Tommy Nanamacher is the art teacher at uh, both Violet and um, Netherwood and they did an exchange mural program so the fifth graders from Netherwood painted a mural with the theme of fireworks to send down to um, 
uh, Violet Avenue, and then the Violet Avenue students did a big mural to send to Netherwood with the, I think the theme was some interplanetary thing. They had it as part in there as decoration for graduation. So that was nice, a, a mural exchange. Very creative. Any more pride? Where are you going to talk about the golden thing? Oh yes, um, it was <laughs> it was uh, in the um, newspapers. They got some nice coverage thanks to Jay's uh, photography. Uh, um, we had the ribbon cutting ceremony on June nineteenth, um, and we had three board members in attendance. Carl made it. Uh, Dan was there, and Doug was there. Did I miss anybody? Nope. Um, uh, so for those of you who may or may not know, John Golden um, uh, donated $250,000 uh, toward the John, well, we named it the John Golden mm -hmm. uh, Fitness Center. Um, we had the ribbon cutting ceremony um, on the 19th. It was mm. really well attended. Yeah, impressive uh, equipment, too. Yeah. Pictures look well, great. The equipment, if you get a chance to go see it, Olympic is quality. really state of the art. Yeah. Uh, as uh, one uh, newspaper described it, it, it was a f uh, an athletic uh, fitness center that rivals some of the best colleges. <laughs> the one thing that's really um, unique about it is that all of the equipment either has you know the eagle symbol for our school district or FDR and uh, all of the color schemes even the weights, even the weights have <laughs> FDR on them um, two of our facilities uh, employees that really spent a lot of time in there getting the room ready for all the equipment um, were there in attendance to celebrate uh, the person, the vendor who uh, supplied most of the equipment has documented from the beginning and was there that day for the ribbon cutting. So he's going to put together a video, a start to finish video, which will be um, really nice. And we'll share that with John and Gloria. Um, uh, John pointed out it's uh, just as much from Gloria, it's a team, and so when it was time to cut the ribbon, John and Gloria cut the ribbon. Um, we presented them with a plaque, uh, and it's a plaque that has a sneaker on it to symbolize the uh, fitness center, so it was a, a great event. And the town was there, and... I, I thought it was interesting that when he said he was the last remaining person from his class. Mm -hmm. him, him, he's the end. That's the <laughs> and he's still pretty spry for 95. And he goes to the gym on a regular basis, so it's not surprising. Okay, next. Dan? Yep. Are we we're officially in Pride? Yes. Okay. Dan, you gonna get ready to come join us up here? Please. Well, while Dan's coming up to the podium, I'll start uh, saying a few words. Um, over the last few meetings, we have had members of the community, former superintendents, former board presidents, uh, come and speak to Dan's years of service and dedication. Informally, we had a get-together um, recently um, to wish Dan well and thank him. Uh, so Dan um, is completing his 18th year in the volunteer position uh, as a Board of Education member. And I don't know if somebody counted up how many years he's been the Board of Education Vice President. You, I didn't count. It's a long time. Um, and at least 12. At least 12. 12. And, um, <laughs> you know, Dan's service has not been limited to the Board of Education. It's been inclusive of several subcommittees, most notably the Special Education Subcommittee, um, Personnel Committee, on and off, numerous committees. Uh, it is 
no secret to this community that if you go to a basketball game, you will see Dan Duffy there along with Janet. Oh, there's Janet. Good, she's going to get a picture. Um, uh, whether it's the National Honor Society Night, the Senior Awards Night, athletic events, concerts, plays. Um, so Dan's service has gone well beyond uh, simply being a board member. It has been incredibly c comprehensive uh, a number of years ago, not that long ago, maybe three, four, I don't know, time slips away for me. Um, Dan was recognized by the Mid-Hudson School Study Council for Excellence in School Board Service, um, a very prestigious award, a very competitive award. Sometimes people are nominated and not selected, so um, I've, people should know that it is competitive. Um, there are really no words to describe 18 years of uh, dedicated volunteerism to um, what I feel is the most, most worthy cause, and that's educating uh, our students and preparing them for the future. So we would like to uh, present Dan with a plaque in recognition of 18 years of service. Um, from the bottom of my heart, um, I thank you. I know that the entire school district thanks you. Um, I will miss you personally. I know you'll still be around chasing 14 grandchildren. Uh, uh, Dan uh, has um, a dance card that is full. <laughs> so um, we know we'll be seeing you around in, in all, all different capacities, but uh, we certainly want to thank you for the 18 years you've dedicated to this school district. Thank you. Smile. <laughs> Is that approved? I have to get are these approved by you? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> got it? Got it? Got Did one? you get yours? I got it. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll she got the back of your head. <laughs> she got the back of my head. I was going to take her out. She was going right in front of her. I think they're going to give it to Janet. Why don't you give it to her? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I've said in the past, uh, I think it's a lot being made of, of something that is just something that I've enjoyed. It, it's, 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 a, it's a wonderful feeling to enjoy something and then get recognized at how hard you've worked at it and how much you've done for it. It's, you know, it's a blessing to fall into that kind of a niche that you're doing something you love and feeling rewarded for what you're doing and thankful for the opportunity to do it. It, uh, it really makes your day to, to get up in the end and say, we, you know, I did, did do something pretty good today. Something, somebody got help, something worked out. And the honest fact is I've gotten a lot more out of it by doing it than the people that I've helped. It, it, this has carried me through so many different difficulties, made me feel so much better about things going on. Over periods of time, the ups and downs you have, it, it's carried me through and the district has been immensely supportive and I won't go into that. And as uh, Greer said, you know, there's only so much of me left to run around. And when the, 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 the dance card grew, grew from three to five to nine, it's somewhere up around 10 right now, of active grandchildren participating in sports from the high school level all the way down to the beginning t-ball level. There's not much time left to, uh, to make it, to do it. You know, last weekend I was in Connecticut and I found it almost impossible to get back in time for some of the things that went on. So this week I did miss a couple of things I would have liked to have attended, but uh, <coughs> the priority of my life has shifted. Not that I don't have a respect and, and a desire to help other people and anytime there's a need, people feel free to give me a call or contact me. I may not be on the board, but I think I have the year of one or two of them that I could pass on some messages. I'm getting a wink from one side there, but his is only going to last a couple more years, too. So we've got to make some more contact here, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> so I thank you for this award. I, I really feel uh, somewhat unworthy in the sense that I've enjoyed so much of what I've done that uh, to be recognized is somewhat embarrassing. But thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah.
And um, I'd like to introduce to Mr. Ed Spence. If you stand up, please. Oh. <laughs> Um, he, he will be coming on, replacing, um, taking in Dan's spot on the board. Hopefully that his 18 years doesn't scare you. <laughs> <laughs> I would just like to echo again um, the debt of thanks from the community for Dan. He's been an excellent board member. If I can be a quarter of what he's been, I'll consider myself a success. Thank you very much. And there's no truth to the rumors that I used to be able to run a sprint before I got on the board and I didn't have any gray hairs. I actually had gray hairs starting at age 25. It's a family trade. If you don't get gray hairs by 26, you're going to be bald by 30. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, no other pride. Um, we'll go on to the superintendent's report. Oh, just, uh, I just wanted, at the last uh, meeting, we had uh, a question about the uh, super, uh, about the enrollment report. Actually, it was Steve Hughes's question. I haven't forgotten about you, but I don't have the answer tonight. It was about, um, uh, I have it written down. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I didn't want, I didn't want you to think that um, it was going to fall off the radar. I will have it at the very next meeting. And you've got a, we've got a tape of it, right, Steve? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I have it written down, too. Yeah. So up next is the um, New York Standards Learning, or New York Learning Standards update. Um, Assistant Superintendent of Viva Kafka. Thank you. Um, this is actually one of your board goals is to receive two of these um, presentations. This is the second one. And I'm actually going to start with um, the video that our very own Carly Johnson made. She's on our district leadership team. And um, board members got to see it, but the public hasn't gotten to see it yet. So hopefully it'll, it'll show up well on, on camera and then um, on the website. So this is it. Did all board members see it or just at the DLT? Oh, maybe DLT? not. So can't remember. If you just go to the next slide. Oh, with this one? Yeah, or this that. one? It might have to be turned on. Oh. No. Oh, okay. I don't know. <laughs> Did I make that sound happen? <laughs> <laughs> I think over there we'll use the magic markers. The thing off the... Use the mouse. Clear the screen. Can I get out of that? There you go. Now no, try it. There we go. One more. Cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
So she did a great job, didn't she? So that's the video worth a thousand words. And, and I'm just going to give you a few more words of what we've been working on since the last presentation. So this is the timeline of the implementation of the New York State Learning Standards, the next generation for language arts and math. So the state ed department has learned a lot from the rollout of the Common Core. Um, the fact that we really need to give teachers time to work with a set of new standards before the tests change. So you can see that um, the new standards were adopted, so we all got to see them last year. This was a raising awareness year. And in the next slide, I'll talk a little more about how we did that here. Um, next year, it's still capacity building, and there'll be more training for teachers. And then it won't be until 2021 that it will be a full implementation of the new standards, and the test will change by that spring. I will say that the, the Common Core Learning Standards are not all that different than these next generation ELA and math standards. So it's not a big as big a task as it may appear. Okay, so the professional development that Jen Kreiser Amy, our Director of Humanities, and Kim Nisel, our Director of Math and Science, um, rolled out. We actually let teachers know before they left for school, you know, left for the summer last June, exactly what was going to be happening and when it was going to be happening. So what we did is we offered sessions before and after school, um, and teachers could choose to go to the ones that were you know, convenient for them and their schedule. And then we had a training day in the spring for anyone who wasn't able to make it, that became mandatory. So it is mandatory training, but we really worked it out. Um, again, with our district leadership team, hearing from teachers, like what is gonna work, what makes sense for people. And everyone got the same training. So this was a really exciting year um, in language arts in the primary. Um, we have been um, looking at our benchmark assessments, looking at our ELA statewide scores, and you know, being concerned about um, quite a bit of flatlining and having kids not be where we would like them to be. Um, so it was um, really hearing from teachers, from administrators, and also from our Generation Ready consultants that we had for four years, that it was really time to um, have a program that was very explicit in terms of phonics, sort of an old school phonics program um, in the primary grades in addition to the reading and writing workshop that we do that's really creative and wonderful for kids, but that we really do need to add this component. Um, so what was wonderful about this process is that um, Jen Kreiser Amy, along with the elementary principals, um, engaged all of the primary teachers in this process. So there was a committee that was selected by representatives from every building that teachers got to choose the representatives from their grade levels. They came together, they developed a set of criteria for what a phonics program should look like, um, you know, based on research. And then they there were um, three programs that were selected as possibilities. And then every teacher in the district had time on a on a training day to look at the programs, give feedback. Um, and then some teachers told us that they wanted more time with the different kits. So we actually had them set up here in the boardroom after school for several days with Jen, and they all came and uh, we had good numbers of people wanting to spend more time. And although um, some teachers did vote for the other programs, it was pretty overwhelming, um, the Fountas and Manel program. So there's a lot of excitement and buy-in about that. So um, also just yesterday when they had that half day um, at elementary and, and the students left in the middle of the day, we got them their kits and they got to spend the afternoon opening it up, looking at it, you know, to, to have it for summer planning. Um, we are going to dedicate the November training day for K2 to have a full day of training with it. Um, it's something we're committed to when we have a new program. You know, we, nothing is that self-explanatory where you don't need time with a trainer and also with each other to work on that together. Um, that said, we are not going to stop people from starting on day one with the program. I expect many will, um, but we will have that training coming up. So um, Greg Tang Sr. Um, is a math guru and has his own program. It's, it's very much um, activity-based and game-based. And his son, Greg Tang Jr., has carried on the work. So we brought in Greg Tang last year, um, and that was at um, Violet Avenue and Ralph R. Smith. And this year, he came to work with the other schools, with Netherwood and North Park. And what he did was he worked with students throughout the day 
and I, I was there for some of that and it was like really, really amazing and engaging and, and it's wonderful and it's also really teacher friendly because he's, he's model teaching. So he's up there doing it and you can see how easy it is to do. Um, and then he stayed for after school professional development for teachers and teaching assistants and then stayed for an evening family math night with families. Um, so again, that was well attended and, and you know we're really excited that everyone had that opportunity. So um, we do have new um, science learning standards as well. Um, we have the Science 21 program. Um, it's through Putnam Northern Westchester BOCES. Teachers really love it. It's very hands-on experiments. Um, for years, we've had it for kindergarten through sixth grade. And with the new standards, um, the, the people that make Science 21 stopped making it for sixth grade. So we had teachers very dependent on this program for many years um, who needed professional development in these new standards and, and in, in the lessons that they were going to have to do. So we um, were really lucky to have a staff specialist, um, Barbara Recchio from Duchess BOCES. She was incredible. She worked with the sixth grade teachers. We used, you know, we get um, a handful of days for free, you know, in quotation marks from BOCES because of the programs that we enjoy with them. So we get some staff development days. So we used a lot of them for sixth grade science. Um, so that was wonderful. And, um, you know, continued, like we, we are actually going to use a few more days to, to work on curriculum as well. Um, there's a slide coming up about the summer curriculum writing that's coming up and some of that is in science as well. <coughs> So Debbie Furman is the best STEM ambassador ever with IBM. Um, our Hour of Code at Haviland, also North Park, um, had an Hour of Code. Is And there's a lot of elementary work that happened. Um, was really incredible. We had IBM um, engineers in, um, some very young <laughs> engineers, um, which was, I think, nice for the kids to see. Um, so, um, you know, it was just a really exciting um, Hour of Code. It, was, it happened sort of over a week. Um, we do have new art standards um, as of last year. Last year, there was all of the training. Um, and this year, it, we're in full implementation um, with the new learning standards for the arts. Um, you know, what I hear from the you know, the staff and from Melinda DeMaio, the director, is that they're, they're being very well received and that it's much more connected than it used to be. So the disciplines are, are more interwoven with each other. So um, this is the summer curriculum writing that we have planned. Again, we're really working on um, science at middle and high school because we do have a new set of standards. Um, high school ENL, which is exciting, the English as a new language. Um, it's so much more integrated um, now with the new um, regulations that most of the ENL services are happening in the classroom, a lot less pull out. Um, so th this is a, an opportunity to do some of that work. Um, US history, again, music and art with the new standards there. Um, some work in sixth grade also with social studies in ELA. Um, health, time to look at that again, and, and library as well. So that's this summer. We have a set, I think, modest budget for curriculum writing. I meet with the directors on a regular basis and we talk about, you know, if there's new standards or if it's been a while since a, a piece of curriculum was written, then it, we, we have a cycle where we revise. We also have a lot of professional development happening this summer. Um, so Paul Anderson is, um, you know, a, a science presenter and, and researcher. We found out that he was going to Dover High School, and they had already contracted with him, and they had a few extra seats. So for a very low cost, we're, we're joining, and we have a handful of teachers going to that. Um, teachers College has a week-long institute for elementary teachers. For There's one for reading, one for writing. It's a pretty rigorous process where you have to apply and get in. So we do have people who got into that and are doing that. We always put some grant funds aside for that in case people get accepted. Um, Leslie College is really where the Fountas and Pinnell um, comes from. So our, our K2 phonics is Fountas and Pinnell. Also we use Fountas and Pinnell um, benchmark system um, to assess reading in elementary school. Um, so we, the level literacy intervention is something else they do that our reading teachers and, and some of our special educators have learned and it's a basically an assessment um, for students who are receiving academic intervention. Um, I've already mentioned K2 phonics but there's some training that goes with that um, that a handful of people are going to get to have and then we'll again bring it back to everyone. Um, Abbott Summer Institute for many years we've sent a really healthy group um, from Haviland and FDR. We're doing that again and in addition we have two of our elementary school principals going with 
for elementary teachers. And this is a chance to really just explore what Abbott Elementary is like and bring that information back to our district leadership team to really look at is Abbott Elementary um, a fit for us? Is this where we want to go next? Um, I don't know if I've mentioned in this setting that our district leadership team developed criteria about if we're going to adopt a new program or an expand a current program, what should we be thinking about? So we developed, you know, there were 13 factors at elementary school that we're looking for in general. It was like kids need help with reading, we need help with kids who are absent, we need help with trauma. I mean, it was a whole list of all of the things we want to see happen in elementary. And the Abbott Elementary program has the potential to meet eight out of 13. And we were pretty stingy with that. Like it wasn't just, well, it's really good for self-esteem. We had to show, you know, did the research of AVID show that it could bring us that. So it certainly met the criteria and that's why we're moving forward and, and really looking into it. Um, integrated co-teaching training, um, it's been a request that if there's a new, a new team who's never worked together before or a teacher who's never been a co-teacher before that um, we offer some training over the summer. So Heather Dennis is looking into either offering herself or if there's a, a good local training, making sure that people are aware of that and, and you know now that the assignments are, are complete, we know who those people are. Um, and then the diversity symposium that really sparked um, the equity work that, that we've been you know, gearing up and we've been doing equity work for a while but we've really you know, gotten into a new gear with it. Um, that diversity symposium in Ithaca is again at the end of July and we're sending a, a, a different group of people to continue that work and have that experience that was really wonderful. I know Doug and Denise went last year and, mm -hmm. and know what I'm talking about. <coughs> And I, I want to thank the academic directors, um, Heather Chadwell Dennis, Special Ed, Jen Kreiser, Amy Humanities, Tom Cunningham, PE Health and Athletics, Melinda DeMaio, Fine and Performing Arts, Kim Neisel, Math and Science, and Rick Wirt, Technology. Um, they really put together this presentation that you just saw. This is really all their work. Um, so I want to acknowledge them here and, um, and see if you have any questions before we do the next presentation so we don't get confused. Nope. Thank you. So I had already planned, um, we had already planned to do a safety update. So this is just something we do periodically, what's happening with safety and our, our safety committees. Um, and then with all of the um, conversations we've had about mental health um, and concerns and, and board meeting conversations, um, we decided it would be a good idea to give you an update on what's happening in, with mental health as well in the district. And, and they're very connected, as you'll see. So we're going to start with what we already have in place. So we have a sense of, you know, how much work has been done and people don't think that we weren't doing anything. So, um, TCIS is Therapeutic Crisis Intervention for Schools. Um, and we have supported our teachers and teaching assistants to become trainers. So we send them to Cornell, they become trainers. It has been incredible um, to have them because we, we have had at least one trainer at every level. So Violet Avenue in the Social Emotional Learning class has a TCI trainer, Havland and the high school. Um, so primarily they were put in place for the social emotional learning special education classes. Um, and what we're talking about doing is really expanding that to um, other buildings. So we've offered it and we have four more people getting trained. Um, so at this point, in, and it was a choice, you know, we didn't mandate people. So at this point we are gonna have every building but one will have a trainer. Um, one of the things that's really nice about it is that when you've been trained, and it's a four-day certification training, it's a de-escalation training. So after you've had that training, um, you really need periodic check-ins, at least every six months, um, on the specific issues that are coming up in your building with students. So by having a trainer right there, they're flexible in terms of after school, or they've done some Saturday work, um, and also just tailoring it to the needs of that level in that building. So again, we're, we're growing that. Um, the SEL program has been in place for more than a few years, but the decision to hire and train behavioral teaching assistants, that was a local decision because we wanted a higher level of training and expertise. It's not required um, by the state. It's not required um, on individual education plans for students. That's a level of support that we've been providing. And again, I mentioned the additional trainers. 
So safety care is a specialized training. Um, these are the eight students, one teacher, two teaching assistants um, that we have at Netherwood Elementary. Um, the training was very well received, so it's it's more tailored to students who um, don't um, who have some speaking or language delays and and the TCIS is a lot more based on talking and listening so this is much more tailored to their needs um, and we're going to be expanding that to the 8-1 class which is as they get older at, at Havlin and FDR plus all the paraprofessionals the aides and teaching assistants and also um, I wanted to mention that the, the Guidance Advisory Council is a new requirement. We met once already, and there was already a plan to look at mental health staffing needs in the district. Um, so prior to a few board meetings ago, you know, Greer and I had been talking about, you know, we we know how, um, how overwhelming it is to the system with the greater needs that kids are coming in with. So we were going to be evaluating that. We're so thrilled to have the extra staff. I'll talk about that in a, in a moment. Um, and and the, the Guidance Advisory Council still has a lot of work to do, but I, I wanted to mention that was already on the docket. Um, they have already chosen a goal of attendance. Um, and I should mention that attendance is now um, part of our accountability system under um, Every Student Succeeds. So we've done a lot of professional development um, in areas other than next generation learning standards and critical thinking. So here's a chance to show you. Um, I'm not gonna read the slide. I think the letters are big enough. Um, I'll just mention that only a couple of them have not been offered for a few years. These are all very recent trainings. You can see how many um, there are that the 94 staff members who went to the trainings, that was just in this school year. That's not a conglomerate of multiple years. A lot of special education training. I'll say the PREPARE training, and I'll, I'll, I have a slide coming up where I tell you what that stands for, um, but that's really the kind of support that comes in um, after there's been a, a tragedy or an emergency, and our two psychologists, um, Dan Hurley and Ashley Billings, are trainers of PREPARE. It's just been a few years since we provided that training, um, and the mental health tool Toolkit is a one-day training that the county offered, and, and we did offer that a couple of years ago. Everything else is really this year's work. And ongoing, yeah. Also, um, we have a trauma-informed consultant, Beatrice Videz. She just finished her fourth year with us. Um, so she works with students, instructional staff, administrators. Um, we started with the administrators, you know, looking at how we conduct ourselves, how we make decisions, how we work with people and communicate actually makes a difference in the level of chronic stress in the whole organization. And chronic stress in an organization is particularly difficult for people who've had trauma whether it's staff or students. And so there actually is some really good research on you know, the, the impact of um, an organization on clients. So we have just, you know, we're continuing that work and we're planning to continue that work <coughs> next year. And again, the, the social emotional learning program was developed in the first place to, to meet the specific needs of kids um, who do have some real challenges with their um, social emotional learning. And here we are with our three positions. So um, uh, the positions that we needed. Oh, yes. Did you skip a slide? I don't think so. I not have an updated partnerships. I think it's coming. <laughs> okay. It might Patience. just be in a different order on yeah. ours. That's okay. Well, I'll, I'll we'll talk make sure about you it. Do. Okay. If it's not even up here, I'll talk about it. Um, so the positions that we're hiring for are in the, one of our elementary schools already had a full-time social worker and psychologist. They have twice as many special classes in that building. Um, the other three um, will, will be hiring two social workers because two of the buildings um, have psychologists and one psychologist for the building that has a social worker. That's already started, that process. Okay, so here's partnerships. So um, we have developed many partnerships and I wanna thank the Board of Education for their support um, in a lot of these cases. So um, Sanctuary is the institute where Beatriz Videz used to work. Um, so it was under Sanctuary for the first three years and this year she went out on her own and we chose to continue to work with our consultant. Um, NYU is really about our culturally responsive work, um, which we have done with them in the past. They came and did a lot of staff development, especially at the secondary 
secondary level. Um, RSC Task um, is the special education arm of it was at Duchess Bosey's, and we when we ever we had um, issues of disproportionality, um, and that would be in our case it was either suspension rates higher for African American students than for white students at a at a rate that was not acceptable, um, or sometimes students black or African American students be in in special education settings that were more restrictive than their white counterparts. So the state has cited us over time um, as part of the reason why our equity diversity work is so important and we continue to focus on that because of that outcome. Um, anyway, RSC Task helped us with a lot of the, that improvement planning through BOCES and that was at no cost when they were doing that work with us. Um, Department of Mental Health, we work very closely with them. Um, CAPE, um, the council, it, it used to be the council on, I think it's council on addiction prevention education now and that's where we have our counselors so we have a CAPE counselor that her name is Regina Hernandez she's fantastic she works half time in Haviland half time at FDR of course Milano the therapy dog thank you so much it's he's incredible um, and then we just had a state education department review of our functional behavior assessments and behavior improvement plans it was really rigorous and intensive some might say nitpicky and we just got full green light compliance and we are doing it exactly like she wants us to <laughs> so um, I hope we'll get some better outcomes with that. Um, I've mentioned Generation Ready. They did all the, the literacy work um, at elementary for the last four years. Um, and AVID. Um, and AVID really is about building college readiness culture. It's not just about a set of skills. It's about really working with our students who may not, um, you know, have the knowledge in the house about how do you apply to college and how do you, you know, make that all work. So AVID provides a lot of support for that. And I've mentioned some of these programs. Um, PBIS is Positive Behavior Interventions and Supports. Haviland has been doing that for many years, and FDR for, I want to say, five years now. Um, and, um, you know, again, that's, you see it all over. It's the rise above at Haviland. Um, and FDR changed it to FDR. Um, so you see those posters. And it's just really trying to show students the positive way, what you should be doing in the hallways, in the bathrooms, in the cafeteria, and, and so forth. Um, and you know, we thought that mentioning the increase of um, extra and co-curricular programs, the way the strings program has just exploded, and so many students are involved, and they're doing so well, um, that th these things are important. These give kids a reason to come to school and be excited about school, and do the rest of the schoolwork they may not love quite as much, so they get to participate in these exciting programs. Um, and Sources of Strength um, is um, grant funded, um, but we do also pay stipends um, for coordinators. It's it's a suicide prevention program, but it's really a school climate program at the high school that um, you see it all over. Um, Joe Sullivan ran that, um, and he just did a great job. The students were really empowered and um, you know, really helped um, bring about the positive climate that you see at FDR. Um, Alveus is a um, bullying prevention program that's very highly rated. Um, we we're able to get a grant at Ralph R. Smith. Um, it's usually very expensive, and they really just continue the work on their own. Um, everyone does bullying prevention in one way or another, and, but I wanted to mention Alveus. Um, second step is an anti-violence curriculum um, that we have. It's really a kindergarten through eighth grade curriculum. Mostly social workers go into classrooms and, and do second step, but sometimes teachers do as well. And I've mentioned sanctuary in the trauma-informed practice. So this is all in place already. And I, I'm going to talk for just a few slides about the risk factors that are barriers to learning that, that, um, that we're talking about. Um, I'm afraid if I click it, I'll go to the next slide. So I'll just oh, there's one more. <laughs> okay. You Thank go. you. I don't want to look at this <laughs> at the same time. So um, these are all factors that many of our students are experiencing in their daily lives. Um, we have, at last count, I want to say about 50% free and reduced lunch average, um, you know, going from somewhere in the 30s in one building to 72% of Violet Avenue. Um, exposure to violence or drug use, and I'll talk in a minute about what adverse childhood experiences are for, you know, really just for a minute, but all of these things are actually adverse childhood experiences that affect learning. If you click once, you have a footer there. Oh, 
it went too fast. I'm going to do it again just so you see it. Here, down at the bottom. Yes. So failure to address these problems early on can lead to system spillover. Um, and schools are often a victim of that. And, th and that's what we experience sometimes. And this is just a slide to remind us that mental health is just a part of overall health. Um, you know, when I used to um, be a chair of the Mental Hygiene Board, it, Ken Glatt was this, Dr. Glatt was this incredible leader for many, many years at the Mental Hygiene Board, and um, his, um, you know, the, the whole um, work that he did was really about suicide prevention, and um, when the board got somewhat dissolved. It was like it got put together with the Department of Health in Dutchess County. He worked with Mark Molinaro to have the, the new Department of Health be called the Department of Behavioral and Community Health. So that was Ken pushing to make that happen. Um, and I think about it, it is behavioral and community health. These are connected. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing that it's one department. So I think it makes sense that mental health, health, and also safety go together. So here are just some facts. One in five school-aged children may be suffering. Now that doesn't say diagnosed, um, but I don't think any teacher um, would be surprised to see that. <coughs> Half of chronic mental health conditions begin very early, and anxiety begins very early, and, and we do see that. 80% of chronic mental health disorders begin in childhood. They're not always diagnosed in childhood, but they, they start. And so these are all of the things that trauma impacts in students. And this is all research-based. No, oh, I took a chance. Um, so you know, we know it affects self-regulation, the ability to calm yourself down, um, behavior, academic performance, um, thinking skills, executive function challenges is really about thinking skills, learning outcomes, engagement in school, and relationships with peers and with adults. So Sandra Bloom is really the inventor of the sanctuary model. And she, this is, you know, a little quote from her where she um, coined the phrase, instead of saying what's wrong with you, we should say what's happened to you. So the, the work that we've done in awareness level trauma has really helped. I hear conversations with teachers, um, in, you know, like not blaming students or their families, but thinking about where's this behavior coming from. Um, and all behavior is really a form of communication. And that's what behavior is. So the relationships we build with children, family, and colleagues is the foundation of what we do. And we have to build those relationships early on and still waiting instead of waiting for there to be a problem. I know we've talked for years about nice phone calls home, and teachers do that a lot, like the first days of school, and they call to say, so-and-so had a great day, and you know, just like form a nice relationship, don't just call when something goes wrong. And I love this quote from Bruce Perry, um, there's no more effective neurobiological intervention than a safe relationship, and that we can do. And ACEs are adverse childhood experiences um, that affect developing brains. And then there are 10 of them. So this is the original ACEs study. There have been a lot of other stu studies, and I could go on about the ACEs study, but I won't. These are the 10 original factors in the ACEs study. Five of them are personal, and again, I won't read them to you, and five are other family members. And it's, it's considered pretty significant if you have four or more. And the way it works is if it happened once or a million times, it's still a one. So your score is anywhere from zero to 10. OK, so I'm, I'm going to move off of that for now and into when physical health or safety. <laughs> it's really the, the same conversation. So we have a district save, um, which is safe schools and violent Hmm, I wrote it down. Safe Schools Against Violence and Education Act of 2000. That was right after Columbine. So our district safety committee is called the District Save Committee, and we also have the building safety teams. So we are in full compliance with our safety plans and drills. 
we do ongoing training at the district and building level. So, you know, one example of going above and beyond is we have district office safety teams that include staff from Hyde Park Elementary and from here. We just, we have safety team meetings at Hyde Park Elementary with all the people that lease the building to talk about how we keep them safe and how they can participate in drills. Um, and we, you know, again, we have safety teams here to talk about whatever aspects there are, whether it's about people getting let in or, you know, different concerns people have about if there's a drill, can this person see it or that person, how do they know it's a drill? Bob Bloom is my co-chair um, in the District Safe Committee, um, and he presents regularly at the state level. He's um, really made us um, brought our reputation in the in the region up, um, you know, and tells us, you know, I don't want to put other districts down, but that, you know, in, in terms of emergency preparedness, we really are ahead. Um, also, we have been doing constant monitoring student internet search. We get automatic alerts if there's self-harm or violence. We have followed up on a few of those things when students are using Chromebook. Um, and it, there's a whole system that alerts um, the principal and then we can let mental health staff know. So it's a way of, you know, stopping some things before they start. Okay, this is PREPARE program. It stands for Prevent and Prepare for Psychological Trauma, Reaffirm Physical Health and Perceptions of Security and Safety, Evaluate Psychological Trauma Risk, Provide Intervention, Respond to Psychological Needs, and Examine the Effectiveness of Crisis Prevention and Intervention. So what that has looked like here is when there's a tragedy in the community or a death, you see the psychologists and social workers come together, create spaces for people to talk, support people, so all of that is part of PREPARE. So that's all what's happening now. This is going forward. So um, a lot of this is are things that we're just starting to explore and some of it are, are really in process. So we do have three new staff that, that are going to be starting in September and we want to um, gather some data on how effective that was. So looking at some data from this year and next year um, so we can hopefully see improvement. Um, professional development for psychologists, social workers, and guidance office um, counselors that is really clinical, specific to their needs, um, you know, to, if, it, if it means bringing in, um, you know, a specialist, that, that's something that we'd be willing to do or send them for training, which we've done before, but that it's still something we, we want to keep doing. Um, the psychologists and social workers were already planning to look at different mental health screening tools. Um, some of them are really easy to use and cost effective, and it would be a universal screening. So a lot of districts are starting to look at having everyone do a screening, just like we do a speech screening, we do hearing, we do vision, and it's a mental health screening. Um, and so what those districts have found is that a lot of kids flagged for um, being at risk, a lot more kids than they thought, because it doesn't always show up as an acting out behavior. So we see the tip of the iceberg, we don't see what's below. So um, we're very interested in doing that. And of course that would be with parent permission. Um, training for families and students in trauma and ACEs. We have had some family nights with BVDES that were very, very well received. Um, we want to continue that. And um, this came up about like how does an, an aide who's newly hired or a teaching assistant or even a teacher feel really prepared um, if they're hired, you know, prior to um, or after new teacher orientation. So the teachers have a very comprehensive program. But if they're hired later, or for our paraprofessionals, they don't have an orientation. So Ellie Garcia and personnel has already talked about an onboarding process at district office. So people you know, have some basic things that they need. And we've talked about adding a little training. And it might be time in the classroom with the person whose last day it is, or you know, some way to get oriented to the work and the kids before just being thrown in. And some of it might be some TCI training or some trauma training. So we're just starting to talk about that. And one of our principals is looking at community schools model, just started to look at that. So that would be, you know, working with an agency to have some services in the building. Um, and that might, might be mental health services or, or something else that families need and really making it more of a community school. So we're, we're starting to explore that. So this is more next steps. Um, so the increased staffing really benefits um, homeschool connection. There will, of course, be an increase in psychological services, counseling services, and also screening. It makes that all of the things we're talking about more possible. 
so here's some of the things that we know that we need to work on going forward. We really need a crisis response protocols for each, when I say each school, it means every school the same protocol, um, but that works for that school. Um, crisis response communication protocols for each school, greater consistency in applying the code of conduct across buildings, um, continue to look at professional development offerings. Um, zones of regulation is has been very successful in the special class um, classrooms where it's been used. We haven't done that training for everyone. That's something that we could look at doing. Um, and um, just more safety training, which we is now required every year. The way that we're doing it this year is by on opening day, we're going to have Andrew O'Grady, who is the CEO of uh, Dutch County Mental Health America. And he's a great trainer, and he's a Hyde Park parent. So he's coming in, um, and we're going to start the year off that way. And also just ongoing to review our special education programs, um, not just in general, but to make sure that the supports in place are um, enough for the student that we're considering for that program and just like to continue to really look carefully at that. Um, and we have started an administrative coverage plan for the elementary schools where directors actually go to the building and there's an agreement with their unit for a little bit of compensation for doing that for the day. or. Um, you know, I'll be on call, or Greer has been on call to, to show up at a building if they need us, and we're, we're only a few minutes away. Um, I think it's really an acknowledgement that um, times have changed, and what was sufficient coverage and sufficient mental health services uh, are no longer. So that's what all of these next steps are really about. So here's our new staffing um, at elementary. You can just see that. Um, but Ralph R. Smith, again, is, has no change. We didn't involuntarily transfer people, so where the openings are is, is where the new hires are. And, and people liked where they were. So again, we're just adding three staff people to elementary. And then what's next in safety is the door hardening, which is where we're at is um, we did budget um, for this year, meaning now the money's there. And we are going to start with all of the big spaces, gymnasiums, the auditoriums, the cafeterias that sometimes didn't lock at all or didn't lock well. And those are spaces with a lot of students. And they're more at risk spaces. So we're starting with all of those doors. They're also the most expensive doors, where even the reimbursement is not going to be enough for those. Um, we're starting with that for the whole district. And there's still enough left over. We're hoping to cover an elementary school. Um, we decided to wait on the high school because of the capital project and the middle school also because of capital project because wherever doors are going to be replaced in those two buildings, they will be replaced with the, the better panic lock kind of hardware anyway. So we're going to start at elementary and right now um, the vendor is just getting back to Elliot Sheldon about the building that makes the most sense that we could complete that has maybe the most locks that need fixing anyway. And then there's a full agenda of recommendations. So the door hardening has been a long time in coming. This was the first step from the SAVE committee for a long time, and it's really happening. But now it's time to move on, and, and we're always looking to improve and get safer. So we're going to be talking about that starting in September. I think that's it. I'm not sure what will happen. Any questions? I've got a couple. Yeah. Um, first of all, just the acknowledgement, Bob Bloom is a great asset yeah. to the district, and I think if people don't realize, he's an asset to probably every district in the county in some yes. way or another. I mean, he, yes. he leads the show in a lot of ways, and I thank Bob for that. It's me too. Um, do we have, or what do we have for an anonymous reporting program um, here in the district? So if a student so, knows of something. Yes. We have anonymous bullying complaints through the website. Okay. And we've explored this idea. I know some districts have, like you could anonymously port through us about um, a problem in the community or you're scared, you know, it's a crime. And we've talked about that with law enforcement and they really don't recommend that we take that on mm -hmm. because you shouldn't be waiting for an email from the principal if there's a, an intruder in the neighborhood. You should call the police. Mm -hmm. So we've been advised against that, so we're not taking that on for them and, and knowing that the responsiveness is a 911 call, yeah. not a, an email to an administrator. Okay. Uh, to that point, I would just say, if you're looking at expanding what you have available, yeah. would be to look at the Say Something program that's done by... What's the school district over in Connecticut? That, okay. Um, so... Sandy Hook, Sandy Hook Promise. It's part.
part of the Sandy Hook okay, promise say I get something, their email, so I'm look. and it's an yeah. anonymous, uh, and it can be reported either by phone okay. or text message or through email, um, and it has a, it's very well set up, and you can you can identify or they they screen all the calls. Okay, or the so they're not going to send us something inappropriate for right. school district. You're going to get it, and, okay. it, and it's timely. It's the type right. of thing if it's life threatening, <laughs> right. you get it you immediately. Get it if it's something they can I'm wait until the next morning. Um, so so yeah. I'd be Thank happy to share that. what I've got with that on yeah. that. Um, what do we do for no, new employees for orientation when when we hire a new teacher or a new aide, oh. anyone who comes in? Well, what? I can speak more to the new teacher orientation yep. process because I've I've been at that every year. It's mm -hmm. a, it's three days. Okay. Um, there's a lot of requirements, but we also train them in in curriculum and the the teachers association tells them about their benefits. I mean, it's very comprehensive three day training, mm -hmm. um, and it's here at district office. Um, we have an administrator Good. who runs that, so that's for teachers. Mm -hmm. I, I can't speak to the personnel side. In a full mentoring program throughout the whole year, they're assigned a mentor for Correct. an entire right. year, yeah. and right. every month they have meetings after school, um, right. and they visit each other yep. and observe each other so that's very comprehensive I can't speak to the onboarding at personnel okay I, I would encourage us to look at that even if, if it's something as simple as when someone comes on so that they know where they can get lunch where they hang their coat where the bathrooms are mm -hmm. some simple expectations yeah gets them productive much quicker. Yeah. So. Um, and and I, I think what I was alluding to in the presentation is the teachers, is, it's very formal. It's mm -hmm. required by state yep. law. Yep. But that for the paraprofessionals, um, it, it's different in each building. Yep. There's checklists in some places. Right, and others. I think it needs and to be building specific. And I think we should formalize specific. that yep. as well. Yeah, and let And with that some standards in. built into it. Yep. Exactly, yep. agreed. Um, and the community schools idea, I think, is something that we yeah. really should look at. Yeah, it's exciting. I think that and, it would, it's you know, something. like we saw in a recent presentation, we have some space in our buildings, not enough to close a building, mm -hmm. but we have some space, so it might be a nice opportunity. Yeah, great. Yeah. Enjoyed it. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, thank you very much. Thanks, Aviva. Thank you. Um, at this time, can I have a motion for public participation? Jeff, can I interrupt for one second? Yep. I was remiss in my thank yous at the podium that uh, has been haunting me since then, and I, I don't want to go on. Uh, when I joined the board, I knew I had three years of me. At the end of three years, like I think most board members have had, there were some doubts, there were some questions. And the remaining 15 years, I have to attribute to my wife, Janet, who turned out to be my best consultant, my best supporter. <laughs> And certainly the most positive voice I heard, because in those first nine years, positive was a good word, but it wasn't an often spoken word. So I wa I'm remiss in not mentioning that, and I want to thank her here publicly for all she's done to carry me through the last 15 years. So at this time, can I have a motion for public participation? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. At this time, anybody who would like to address the board, please go to the microphone and state your name. Seeing none, public participation is now closed and subcommittee reports. Uh, I can talk about the policy committee. Um, I don't know how many of you noticed um, this great spreadsheet that, that Jay did about all of our policies and, and what needs to be reviewed and, and what we have been reviewed. And um, I didn't realize it, but we've, we've, am I reading this right, Jay, that we've reviewed 116 policies this past year? Yes. And time for it. Yeah, geez. Yeah. <laughs> and stuff, but um, there's so many more to go. I don't, I don't even know how, how many are, there's just so many. But we're working on it, and I think we're doing really well. And I know we have some under, on the agenda for first consideration tonight. And uh, do we have some for second as well? Tonight? Mm -hmm. Can I remember? Just first, I don't remember. I just don't remember. Just first. All right, if anybody has any questions. Right. And, and of course, none of this would run smoothly about Jay. Oh my goodness! If uh, Jay didn't coordinate stuff and get everybody on the on the same policy on the same night, and uh, mm -hmm. this wouldn't happen as it does not happen in many districts. Many districts just take whatever 
NISMA gives them and slaps them in. <coughs> so, uh, mm -hmm. Thank you for that, Jay. And so if anybody has any questions about the policies, please. Yes, please. <laughs> yes, Doug. And, and anybody that opens their mouth will be volunteered. <laughs> <laughs> the organization will be, no, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I just have to say that, you know, in some ways, you know, the policy committee uh, can feel like tedious wordsmithing, but it never, it never really is. The conversations are very rich, very deep. Um, yeah. The policies are scrutinized from a multifaceted perspective. What if, what if? So, um, there's a lot of great critical thinking that happens in those policy meetings, and it's always a small group, but it, it, it's incredible. I mean, it, it is uh, an effective way to review policy, um, and as an organization, the, uh, the quality of your policies um, oftentimes support actions that are uncomfortable that need to be taken to taken um, but the policy is established outside of conflict and is uh, used with a lens to en encompass all the what-ifs so uh, it's probably the most important work a Board of Education can do and I will say that I have never seen a district um, take it to the level that this district ha has. And uh, so I, I think it's commendable that this board is committed to it and that Jay keeps us all on she task. She keeps us all on task. Just being able to follow the edits and coordinate the calendar is uh, no That's small crazy. feat. But I just want to say, too, that we don't just sit and do the policy, everybody. We, we consult with <coughs> everybody who's involved in the policy, you know, depending on what it, what it is. So it's not just Doug and I, you know, in there, you know, saying, well, we think it should be this way. Um, so we can. So NISBA gives us recommendations. Um, you know, New York State Ed. We get we get um, recommendations from administration and from all different all different aspects. So it's really all the attorneys. All the attorneys when we want, when we want the attorneys and, sure and everything. So it's it's yeah. it is complicated, but it's not just us unilaterally unilaterally making those decisions. So you know. Um, so read our policies. Mm -hmm. And, it, <laughs> and it's good. important that it be correct because mm -hmm. um, if something should happen with a community member or parent where the, and the policy is not written correctly, we could get in a lot of trouble, we could be sued. So it's really in, important to look at these things to make sure that we have covered all what's going to happen if somebody slips on ice in the, uh, in the driveway at Hyde Park Elementary, which uh, happened. <laughs> but, you know, so, um, so there's got to be some other committee that wants to. Okay, you, you want to say something? Is it time? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Before I start talking yeah. about the audit committee, so you go on. <laughs> I can just report that the Dexas County School Board Association had their annual meeting last Thursday, uh, elected a new slate of officers, and also we had a nice presentation. And I'm going to get it wrong, but it's I think the Dutchess County Department of Solid Waste, I think, is the, and they were talking, they're working, they have personnel that are working with school districts on recycling and composting programs, and uh, spoke of some of the highlights of uh, different districts that are doing it well, and uh, it's a resource that's out there. So. Um, it's something that if you know working with um, uh, and, and every school districts call it different things it could be the the uh, environmental committee it could be the earth committee it could be whatever whatever group or club is involved and at all levels whether it's elementary school or high school so Oh, and I guess I'd also say that uh, I and I ran into Ed at the uh, NISBA appreciation gathering that was down at Villa Borghese this week. It's been a long week. Yeah, this week, uh, stopped down to see uh, opportunity to, to 
meet a few people from NISBA and, uh, and a few other board members from throughout the county and uh, you know share some of our experiences. So I have to admit my visit was short, but it's always good. Oh. You want to talk about the audit committee? Sure, okay. go ahead. No, you... No, no. Um, I, want, I want to hear him what he has to say after you talk about the... Uh, the uh, well, audit, I'll get it wrong. Committee. The audit committee has been meeting. We um, we conducted with the help of Bo Bose, but was it Bosey's? It wasn't Bosey's. So they had the internal audit, right? And they had recommendations. They gave us and reported on them. Um, on the district developed a uh, a plan to. Right, we did. Right. Um, we did a plan for. You got to remember, it's been a while since we met. Right. Yeah. We we talked about the. We did an internal audit on our extracurricular. Or in, right, our extracurriculum right. funds, and yeah. we also yeah. we also audited H our personnel. The H and R, H R. H and R policy, yeah. H R policies. And so we have some corrective mm -hmm. plans and that are on here, corrective actions and stuff. But um, overall, it was really. Um, it was really helpful, right? The, and, and the audit itself was very thorough. I thought it was very professional. The gentleman who presented uh, did a very thorough job, um, like I said, professionally. And not that um, our former mm -hmm. internal auditor wasn't professional. This was just a little bit better. That's all I gotta say. So those are also on the agenda for everybody to look over. Right. Okay, and the special ed committee had a special meeting this week. Um, we met with a psychologist, a general ed teacher, one special ed teacher, um, Heather and Aviva, and Carl joined us. And to discuss the issues we had seen in the district, and I thought it was a very good working meeting, mm -hmm. lots of things to talk about. Um, we are going to um, reschedule to come back after three months after the school starts to see where we're at, um, where we, where the improvements are working, and any, any other adjustments we will need. And also discuss, since we are losing Dan in this committee with the wealth of knowledge, that the special ed committee will have a special meeting this summer for anyone who's going to be on the committee, because we have a lot more learning to do that we're losing with Dan. So Heather's going to give us a special meeting in the summer to get us all up to par and, and learning all the different acronyms and everything else. <laughs> Don't learn them because it'll change them. <laughs> Any other committee reports? Okay. Moving on to the consent agenda. Can I have a motion for the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. Okay, on to new business. Can I have a motion for 11.1, .1, special education placements? So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? I recommend the adoption of these packages as presented to us. Okay, well, and we always had a note from Heather that. Yeah. <laughs> Did anybody count how many times I've said that? Oh, I know. <laughs> Thank you. We had a note from Heather that there was over a thousand meetings they've had with all, all of these that we've been approving. There are only three people running them. And only three people running them, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all those in favor? Motion carries. Can I have a motion for 11.2, the bond for bus replacement plan? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion? I'm sorry, you seconded. Yep. As this is a roll call vote, um, mm -hmm. you have the order. Go down the table. Okay. Um, we'll go down the center. <laughs> Perry. <laughs> yes. Carl. Yes. Jeff says I. Yes. Dan. Aye. Doug. Aye. Denise. Yes. Mike. Yes. Okay. Motion carries. I have a motion for 11 point. Give me a chance to go first. Yeah, done this way, the Z's. You know. <laughs> I have a motion for 11.3, the established of the TRS Reserve Fund. So moved. Second. 
Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Okay, on to 11.4, fund for the 2018-19 NYSTRS Retirement Contribution Reserve Sub-Fund. So moved. Second. second. Whatever. Got him. I didn't get the second. Doug, Mike. <laughs> Forget it, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? They don't hear us down here, you gotta really speak up. I wasn't Gary's. 11.5, the abolish of the 2014-2015 tax cert reserve. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion oh. carries. A motion for 11.6, the establishment and fund for the 2018-2019 tax cert reserve. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. Okay, 11.7, .7, the reserve funding recommendation. So moved. Second. Do you get that? Yep. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. 11.8, the calendar for Board of Ed meetings for 2019-2020. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. Okay, a motion for 11.9, first consideration of policy updates. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Good job. Yep, thank you too. <laughs> All those in favor? Motion carries. Okay, a motion for 11.10, facility use request for the Wallace Center. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? carries. Good. Okay, I'll have a motion for 11.11, .11, corrective action plan for the internal audit report. So move. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. Okay, 11.12, memorandum of agreement with the Hyde Park Teachers Association. So move. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. Can I have a motion for 11.13, terms and conditions of employment, confidential and managerial employees. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. I have a motion for 11.14, Deputy Superintendent's terms and agreement, terms and conditions. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. I have a motion for 11.15, School Business Administrator terms and conditions. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. We have a motion for 11.16, Director of Equity and Human Resources Terms and Conditions. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just warm up for the reorg. <laughs> I was going to say, the reorg better be about a third of what's been in the past. <laughs> <laughs> it might be with all we've taken care of. Now. Okay, can I have a motion for public participation? So moved. Second. Sure, second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Very. Okay, this is your second chance. If anybody would like to address the board. Seeing none, public participation is now closed. There is no other matters deemed necessary. Just but have, I, I don't know where it fits in, but it's uh, sort of related to Patrick's idea of FDR education. So last week I was in Reims, France, and there's a room where the Nazis surrendered after World War II. It, it, it was in a college, and it was hidden there. It was a war room, very critical to the success. And today, it's called, it's still a school, and it's Franklin Roosevelt High School. So. Oh, no. 
thought really? that was pretty cool. I was like, geez, I've you know, never even knew that. And, wow. And, uh, you know, that there's pictures of him all over the place and wow. stuff. It's, uh, wow. Yeah, so a little bit of your uh, connection to the history of FDR. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure when they write that curriculum, they include that piece, yeah. and maybe yeah. they'll need the superintendent to supervise a trip over yeah. to the yeah. students. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or, well, no, I, only I, I, I the board member. <laughs> Uh, a picture of it too, so you could see. What oh wow! Doing. But yeah, it's uh, Lycy. I assume means school. school Roosevelt. Yeah. Wow! It's pretty cool. That was pretty cool. I was pretty excited to see that. That is amazing. Mike, this doesn't mean you can submit a voucher for <laughs> travel expenses. <laughs> <laughs> too late. <laughs> well, yeah, and we do need to give a thank you, Sir Patrick, for this one year of service to the board. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, we Absolutely. really appreciate you. has been raised again. Yes. Thank you. Yes, we really did like your presentation at the end of the year. Okay, no other matters deemed necessary by the board. No need for a second executive session. Can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. moved. <laughs> second. For a second. Second. Any discussion? Yeah? No? Bye. <laughs> All those in favor? Motion passes. We are now over.